All right, so bear with me here. I obviously don't have audio down yet. Um, so some people had questions about how the green machine was hooked up. Uh, so I thought I'd do kind of a block diagram showing how things are connected. I use the, this machine's using the 7i92, which is an ethernet um, interface card from Mesa. It's got two ports. This is, this is it. It's, um, it's got 17 IO and 17 IO. Um, so this is right out of the box. It's supposed to kind of emulate a printer port or printer port. So what you can get is, you know, another ribbon cable that would plug into this, this port gives you two printer ports worth of IO. Um, but it does, you know, high speed step generation, uh, uh, PWM and coder counting. Plus, it's expandable. You can you can plug in um, daughter cards that do analog servo interfacing or uh, stuff like that. It's pretty amazing how flexible Mesa stuff is. So, um, how I have this set up. This has kind of been a journey, let's say. Um, I have this uh, the, this came with a lead shine mx3660 which is a three axis stepper drive so p2 this is p2 is plugged into the lead shine so it does the steppers because it's a stepper drive um, i've got the home switches hooked into it uh, the probe input and the led on the probe is hooked into the lead shine and also the e-stop so if you look at P2, I've got X-step, X-der, Y-step, Y-der, Z-step, Z-der, probe in, Y-home, Z-home, X-home. This has a PWM output because the lead shine has an analog output for running like a, a VFD. Um, this came with some other brushless DC drives that took analog in and they did not work very well. So I ended up going with the stumble drive. Um, as an experiment and it's been working really good. Um, and then probe LED, oh, and e-stop. So on port two, I have one, two, three, four, five open IO yet um, that could be used for other things. So then the, the P1 port, the header port uh, on the 7i92 is where the rest of the stuff is hooked into. I'm using, um, Smart Serial, which is a Mesa communications um, um, standard, I guess. Um, that's that's what communicates between the 7992 and the stumble drive. It's bi-directional. It's like it's in the megahertz speed, and it's real time. So that's what I use to tell the spindle how fast to go, and you know I can read back um, the spindle speed and the the current and, and stuff like that. Plus it's got like eight IO that I'm not using um, that would all be communicated through the smart serial connection. And so this is a, a the stumble drive is kind of like a Swiss army knife. It controls all kinds of stuff, different ways. Um, the, what I picked was I, I put an encoder on the spindle motor with an index so that the stumble drive would know how to align the, the three phases with um, the, I guess you'd call it the commutation, kind of, with the spindle motor. And that's been working really good. Um, no issues so far with, with this setup. You've seen me in, in previous videos, I've done rigid tapping, I've changed direction, I've done a lot of stuff with this setup and it's been working pretty good so far. Um, this really cool graphic here is showing the belt drive, the two speed um, belt drive. Um, so I ended up having to put a, an encoder on the spindle so I could do spindle synced motion type stuff like rigid tapping or threading. Um, that also hooks into the second port. So this has like hardware encoder counters that that these are hooked into. Um, so they'll count into the megahertz. Um, works really well. So this 
spindle can go up to 10,000 RPM. It has no problems reading that. Um, and it's like, it's a pretty low resolution encoder. It's, it's a gear tooth. If you look at the previous video, it's a gear tooth encoder. It's like 46 teeth. Uh, so four times that for the, the counts per revolution. Plus it's got an index, so that's using three pins. Um, then I added a jog wheel and two selector switches. Um, so this is, these both are set up as binary. Um, this is a three position, it uses two IO. Technically it could have four positions with two bits, but I only needed three. Um, this is seven position, it uses three IO. This could have been eight, but I only needed seven. And that's hooked into the, uh, the internal, the header port on the Mesa. So this is P1, that's the P1 port. Um, I have the jog wheel A and B. Um, select one, select two, select three. Those are this rotary switch. Um, jog scale one and jog scale two are these two bits for this switch. Um, and then we have spindle A, B, and X encoder. Uh, smart serial, re receive and transmit, and hmm, I already did jog scale two. So port two has one, two, three, four, five open I.O. also. So I have ten I.O. that I, I can still use, plus eight on the stumble drive, plus, I mean, if all else failed and I needed a whole bunch, um, I could use another, I could turn one of some of these pins into smart serial ports and add more cards to... Um, this setup. Uh, like I say, it's really flexible. Um, so, uh, I was going to say something about smart serial, I think. Hmm. Don't remember. Hmm. Anyway, so that, and then the ethernet hooks to the computer. Um, it's a, that's also a real-time connection. Um, and it works really well. I so far, I don't think I've had any problems with it. No noise issues. That's always something I worry about. But so far, uh, um, been just trying to be conscious of grounds and shields and um, grounding everything at the at the same point. So, like I say, so far so good. Um, the actual I have three three power supply. Well, two power supplies. One that runs the steppers, it's like 60 volts. And then another power supply that does 24 and 5, which runs the stumble and um, the Mesa card. Mesa takes 5 volts, stumble takes 24. Um, there's also, I guess there's also the supply for the stumble, which is pretty much just rectifying 110 volts AC and dumping it into the stumble drive. I actually used uh, AMC... AMC drives, the, the drive motor company. We have some of those drives, and, and one of the drives was bad, but it had a good power supply in it. So I ended up using that power supply for this drive. Um, it's got a dump resistor and everything in it, so it was a good fit, and it fit into the box. So there was something else I was going to say about Smart Serial, and I don't remember. Hmm. So this doesn't get into how the actual HAL file is hooked together. That that's probably a little more involved, but it isn't it isn't that much more complicated. You just got to figure out, okay, now what do I want to do with these connections inside a Linux CNC? Like this is hook in, hooked into an encoder. In HAL, there's an encoder module that has a bunch of pins that you virtually connect to what you want to connect it to. Like um, this. This encoder counter for the spindle is hooked to the um, motion uh, input for rigid tapping and stuff like that. So, I mean, once once you do a few things in HAL, I think you start wrapping your head around it and it starts making more sense. So, uh, I think, I mean, that's big picture how everything's hooked together, and I guess if you have any more questions, uh, let me know. God, I can't remember what I was going to say. Hmm.
Hmm. All right, so I guess if you have any questions, let me know.